arrowheads and spear points, sometimes called projectile points by the professionals, they are found in an amazing variety of styles and shapes and sizes. Of equally wide variety is the type of material that they are made from uh, that's used in, in their production. And in, in the nearly 40 years of avocational archaeology work that I've done, I have found some truly unique arrowheads and spear points, as well as other artifacts. Um, for sure, they are one-of-a-kind pieces, and these items do not fit into any recognized category um, or style, sort of a category unto themselves, if you will. And it is one of those, a most remarkable artifact that I wish to share with you today. Um, last year, 2020, that's right, the year from hell, uh, will be forever remembered for the COVID-19 pandemic as it consumes so much of everyone's lives. I will recall a number of artifact hunts or hunting expeditions that my buddy Gil and I went on unmasked and undistanced unashamedly in the summer of 2020. And it was a particularly hot and humid day in mid-August in what my dad and mom used to call the dog days of summer. And Gil and I made our way carefully over the uh, plowed rows of the farm field our eyes trained downward, looking for that shape that would uh, bring us hopefully to the uh, reason that we were out there, finding an arrowhead or something of that sort, any kind of any kind of artifact. But an arrowhead is always nice. It's kind of an extra thrill really to find for some reason. So just when I thought that it would not happen, my heart skipped a beat as I looked down and right before me, ready to be stepped on, was what looked like a beautiful dark gray projectile point. Now what I actually found is this. And I want to tell you more about this though in just a minute because this is a very unique artifact in my opinion. So I turned to see where Gil was as he had drifted off into another direction and uh, I shouted out, Hey Gilligan, I found a really nice one. It looks like a dandy. As I call him Gilligan, it's not his name, nickname. He has another nickname. And I can't share that here, this is a family channel. <laughs> Anyways, as Gil was making his way over to me, I reached down and I picked up the point, which turned out to be this. And I was for a moment um, puzzled, perplexed. Then I chuckled to myself and thought, well, 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 good old mother nature. She has really pranked me this time. Because what I picked up was a stone flat on this side, flat on this side. And um, as you can see, it has the shape of an arrowhead on it. Let's see. And uh, the stone itself is rather low grade, um, tabular bayport shirt, more than likely. And surrounding the arrowhead shape is a matrix, a matrix of rind is what I call it that is a genuinely, uh, generally unusable material, the, the white outer part of the, of the tab, or uh, if it was a vapor, uh, oh, nodular, it would be the outer part of the, of the ball of chert. But anyways, um, lost my place. <laughs> anyways, it is, it is a low grade material. But the arrowhead shape is, uh, is, is really quite profound. Now Gil finally arrived, arrived and anxiously uh, asked, what did you find, Dennis, what did you find? And I handed it to, to him and, and his uh, reaction was, why are you pranking me on such a hot day? This isn't an arrowhead, but it is pretty cool. So even though it wasn't actually an artifact, <clears throat> I didn't think at that point, I decided to add it to my collection anyways. I, I think it was worthy of, of being in there. So it is at home though that I examined this uh, uh, stone more carefully and then I found that it was truly a truly unique piece with an interesting story to tell. At some point, most likely in the late woodland period, because uh, the uh, most of the artifacts from that site are late woodland or Middle Woodland. Um, but at some point in the late Woodland, a man of the Red Race saw this stone 
And he saw about 1500 years earlier what I saw. And like me, he picked it up, which is an empathic impression that I get. He examined it, probably thought it was a special gift from the from Kishimanitu, the creator spirit, to bring uh, skill and good fortune to his hunting. And he decided to free the uh, their arrowhead from the matrix that surrounded it. The matrix, of course, being all the material around it. Now, the stone came from Michigan's thumb area where Bayport Church is abundant. And it was... Um, and it was not very far away uh, where this kind of material is gathered. I get the impression that he was with a group of men from his tribe who traveled the riverways in a dugout canoe, which would be common, to seek out and bring back to their village the raw material that they needed for the production of tools, arrowheads, salts, what have you. It was a place they were familiar with as they had more than likely gone there often to, uh, you know, to get the raw material. Now, let me show you, let me show the little clues that I find on the stone that seems that, to suggest that this, this is uh, something more a more of a story to it than just a shape on a stone. But first, as you can see, the shape of the arrowhead is perfect. Now see, here um, where an arrowhead would be notched, it is notched, comes around a curved base, and here is another notch on the other side, which is typical for an arrowhead, okay? But this notch is an amazing difference between this one and this one. And that difference is this one has been chipped out, uh, napped, if you will, purposely removed as our ancient man began his attempt to free this arrowhead from the matrix. Now, I, I know you can't see it probably in my setup here, but you can actually see the little pressure flaking uh, scars where he attempted his extraction, if you will. Unfortunately, it could not be removed as it uh, as uh, fractures in the rock would have shattered the, shattered it to pieces. If you look at the back, that's actually what started to happen. As he removed material from this, it started to break away here and shatter and there were fractures all in through the rock that would make it impossible even for an expert stone worker to remove that shape from it. And I get the ener the feeling from the energy of, of, the, of the piece that he was very disappointed. However, he didn't throw it away as he still considered it to be sure a fetish given by Kichimanitu to ensure successful hunts. Now, this then as an empath, I have the impression of the feel of buckskin that makes me believe he carried this in a medicine bundle, um, a personal metal medicine bundle they sometimes wore around their neck or on their side. And it contained many things that were uh, personal to them um, that brought good medicine, if you will, to them. There are many um, almost um, there are many almost um, intangible, if you will, so fragmentary. They are only like nanoseconds in duration. These impressions that I get. Let me say that my impression from being empathic cannot be of course be proven, though I feel they are, or I, I feel they are accurate, or I would not share them with you. Now, I want to show you another piece here. This one Gil found by himself on the riverbank here in Saginaw. Sorry about that, folks. I meant to turn that off, and I forgot to, and I apologize for that. 
and it is too bulky to be an arrowhead. Right? So I showed this on a video a few years back, and a viewer suggested that it actually was a hunting knife, and it's a perfect form for a hunting knife. But it's one of those pieces that are um, unusual, if you you know, very unusual. But this is special, and I, I carry this one with me a lot because I think it has a lot of spiritual significance to it. However, the provable facts, such as the pressure flaking in the one notch, cannot be denied. That being uh, a late woodland man tried to remove it. So, I hope you have enjoyed this short video and the you know taking a look at this piece. I've enjoyed bringing it to to you and sharing it with you. And I'd love to hear your reaction to it and your thoughts about it. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you all again real soon. And until then, I pray you stay safe, healthy, happy, and blessed. And I appreciate very much you being here. If you like the video, please, before you forget, leave a thumbs up for myself and for the rest of the crew here at the Dennis Morrison Channel and Charlie Cat Productions. And if you have not subscribed, I'm inviting you personally right now to please subscribe to the channel so that and you know crunch that that bell icon so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos i have a lot of artifacts that i want to share with you and many other things too so thanks for being with me today god bless you all see you soon